Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. I'm going to build this uh, small aquarium, uh, which has a twist. I'm going to have some uh, vegetation, some plants, some immersed plants on top of this whole layout. So stay with me. My plan is to have some terrestrial plants on top and uh, to use some red moor wood on the top of the tank and it will enable me to put a lot of, of plants on top of it and also the light will fit. Before we begin, I'm going to take this piece because I love it. I'm just gonna stick up this guy's back. <laughs> This is going to be above the water, imagine this, okay? I will just place it for you guys so that you see what's my plan. This fits by accident perfectly, okay? That's the main idea. This part is above the water, this part is below the water. And I know it's in, fr in the front, but anyways, we will have some plants over here so I'm pretty sure that I will need to put some light above this whole structure here so it will be lit by two lights. I want to add some more roots now to continue this. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. There you go. I've got this branch holding it on top from this side I've got this branch holding it and from the back I've got the screw. If you can somehow remove this whole structure during the maintenance, like that, you have immediate access to the, to the aquarium. I will keep this mobile. I've got some tape here to protect the glass from this screw. And then we still want to continue. No, this is not good here. No, well, maybe like this. It is okay to combine these two types of wood it's not a problem at all. My plan is to use some ferns in the back, like so. If I put this in here, that is okay, but I need to hide it, and I need to hide it with the wood. That just stays there. And also it will creep down from here, so you will not see it from this part, because this part, the left part of the aquarium is visible. You think it's not gonna fit? Tommy has some problems. I don't want it to fit. I want to put some plants on top and I want to put some rocks at the bottom and the rocks will intertwine with the roots at the top so you will think that this whole thing is sitting on the rock. The light is right here in front and there's another light on top. So we need to find another light. So good question, Tommy. Please find me another light that we can apply to, to, to light the terrestrial plants on top. Okay, anyways, back to drilling. <laughs> We need another pot on the other side. Why don't we put this also on? So we've got these two fastened here. This whole thing can come out in one piece. I could use this, this Kidia, which doesn't need anything. If this hangs into the water, then it will uptake the water through the uh, leaves and through this stem here. So it's going to look great. I could use the uh, hippoestes. This red over here, or even behind it. This is the beginner's guide. <laughs> you can do this, it's okay. All you need is a drilling. In the meantime, I can take this uh, Aspenium parati and I need to split it in two and to put them in these two pots in the back. See the concept already? So, so. Let me try on the light because I forgot that I still need to take that into consideration. I think the light will be a problem for this guy. 
I don't want it to burn, so I will push it back. Now we have another patch of red on the other side as well. We will have moss covering this part, going down into the water, and we will have rocks at the bottom and we will have some light here. What kind of rocks should I put in the background? They need to get up all the way to the top. Without crushing, I only think that the only thing that I can do is using the Seiryu stones. This might be a little bit bulky, but it could stay in the back. You need to put the root on the rock so that you understand why it's there. Otherwise it's just hanging. The roots don't just hang from nothing. So detailing, maybe now it's time to use the wheel. This one needs to be filled up with rocks. This one has some round rocks. So we need to have plants for this. The trident goes to the background, gonna creep out of here. Trident does not need any soil, so it's fine like that. It will attach itself to the rock and that's it. And then let's go with the Bucephalandras. So I'm putting the Bucephalandra in between the cracks of the wood. Right there, in there. And let's start planting the Abida Brown crypt. That goes in the back here. The main idea behind using epiphyte plants in the back is we don't have any soil in between the cracks, obviously, so we need some uh, soil here. But also the idea is that we don't have any light here because most of the light will shine down on the glosso which is in the foreground. So we need plants that would survive well in shady areas. No finesse in the layout so far. I'm just using strong textures plant and strong rocks, so the whole thing is just abundance of very strong lines and everything. The Monte Carlo will grow on this one here. The only plant that I think needs a little bit more light is the Glosso, so let's see if uh, that will feel good under these circumstances, hopefully yes. This needs some time to grow, so if the maintenance guys are doing a good job on it, hopefully yes, because they have a lot of space to work, because this now here is a completely classic Iwagumi. If you would just look at this, you would say that it could be, except the Glosso, it could be a low maintenance uh, tank, you could put an internal filter, you can do it uh, on a better budget, but we're gonna use CO2, because of the Glosso and I want the plant health. I'm going to use an external filter. No idea where I'm going to introduce the hoses. I'm introducing the final piece. And tell me if you like it with it or without it better. The light fits perfectly. If you do like it, please comment below. Let me know what this new style means to you. And uh, please help the channel with subscribing, with, uh, with the channel membership and everything that you know that you can help a YouTuber with. Okay? We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.